forgive, they know not what they did Innocent man in the midst of the lies Worse than the cross You know that it's God Spoke not for applause, didn't care what the cost Father sent him to do it for the last Man, I've been waiting to watch this show right here No distractions. Whew. Joe, are you watching TV? I don't know. Jeremy said it had something to do with the message. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Let's check it out. Okay. Okay. Sure. Let's watch it. Hey, how's it going? It's good to see you. Hope you're having a good day today. I want to tell you um, a story, but first I want to ask you a question. Have you ever done a tough workout before? I have done a lot of tough workouts. Uh, first, it's really started off with just, I wanted to be a basketball player. How about you, any basketball players? Are you a basketball player? Football player, soccer, dancing. You like to stay in shape. Maybe you go outside going to the wilderness, do you hike, you climb, you run, or just been forced into it, right? Let's be honest, like PE class maybe, PE class, to force you to run a mile. You ever gotten to a point though, just where you're in the middle of a really tough workout, a really tough exercise, um, just really just, um, you're sweating, your heart is pounding. It's like, it's like a fight. It's a struggle to get to the end of it but you're trying to get somewhere. You're trying to achieve something, especially if you're in a regular routines of working out, exercising, practicing, training. You're doing it for a reason. You're trying to get somewhere, but it can be like a fight that just keeps going and going, seeming like there's no end. Well, I wanna tell you a short story. I'll tell you about a young man. I promise it won't be long, so pay attention. This short story about this young man goes like this. He was, he was very, very happy. Picture the sun and the grass, the trees. He particularly loved the willow tree. And there was just this amazing place of wonder that he would find beyond the willow tree. Just imagine, let your imagination picture all the most amazing things. And then all of a sudden life started happening. Life just became like a fight, fight against every person. It seemed like every person was against you. It seemed like everything was a new struggle. School was a struggle. People, friends was a struggle. It felt like more people were against you than you could count. It felt like even the very teachers who were there to help you were your own enemies. It started to feel even like your own family were your enemies. All of this is how it started to feel like for this boy. And he struggled and he fought all the way up until being a man. And this struggle started to become so bad, it was like he was in a wilderness. And he kept fighting and fighting and fighting, running harder, uphill battle. Just, and it was almost, it was like there was many foes. Picture a medieval battle with swords and arrows and shields. And he had just his sword and he's just fighting in this dark forest where there's just barren trees and just dark figures who just keep attacking. And no matter how many he defeats, he doesn't ever seem to win. And finally, after using up all his will, he finds himself laying down, bleeding to death. He finally decides, I will cry out for help. God, if you really are real, come now. Come here and find me here. And that's it. No, that's not it. If that was it, I wouldn't be here telling you this story because I was that boy and I was that man. And that fight, that struggle, that was inside. Have you ever felt like there's things happening inside that people just don't get and don't understand? Well, I wrote a story and I wrote that story that was explaining what I had gone through. So thank you for listening to that story. But I want you to know that that's not the end of the story like I said, I'm still here. So here's the good news that I cried out specifically for God in this wilderness. Right when I did, the experience was like an ocean 
had just come and flooded this wilderness of no water and I was suddenly immersed in God's presence. I heard a voice, I heard you were looking for me. And I said, I wasn't looking for you, I was looking for the truth. He said, I am. I was talking with Jesus. I'm going to read out of Luke 23 and I'm going to start with verse 44. It was now about the sixth hour and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour when the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus calling out with a loud voice said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. You may have heard many messages about Jesus. You may have heard it preached. You may have heard about Jesus. But I'm wondering, has anybody ever told you that they know Jesus? Well, I'm here to tell you, I know Jesus. I'm a real man. This really is my house. I can't tell exactly what you can see. You probably can't see a lot. But guess what? I didn't make it look spotless and perfect just because I was on camera. Because I'm giving you the real deal. It's not a complete mess, and it's not spotless and perfect. That's where I am. But Jesus was spotless, and Jesus was perfect, and Jesus is and always will be. And you guys need to know that's why he came. That just as I was in this place of a struggle and a fight that I was never going to win, and I finally got to the point where I realized that, and I called out for him, and now he lives with me, and I know him, and he speaks to me, and we have an everyday love relationship. Just as that has happened for me, that must happen for you. It's about knowing God and being known by him. We once were dead, but now we are made alive. Because now you live for him. And you are dead to your old self just as he died. And you live now just as he lives. He loves you so much. And he's just saying, if you just knew how much I loved you, if you just knew you were my beloved, if you just knew you're my treasure, you would come in my arms. This is your home. I have something more for you than you can imagine. His name is Jesus, and he's the answer to every problem in your life, and he's the answer to every problem. And one day, everybody will know it, but you don't have to wait for everybody to know it. You can know him now. Don't wait for everybody else. Don't worry about what everybody else is saying. It's time. Lord Jesus, I pray for every single person listening to this that are receiving this that they just take the time right now to say, Jesus, I want to know you. I want to know you. If you're really real, I want to know you. And I believe in you, Jesus, but I don't know you like that. Maybe some people are in that place. God, I pray if that's their heart, that they get to know you. For those who are just thinking, this isn't for me, God, I pray you come and show them it is for them. I pray that you come and show them that you bring them to life that they can know you, they can have a, they can see the wonder and awe of who you are, that they can have righteousness, peace, and joy forever. Lord God, I pray they receive that. I pray for the gift of salvation. I thank you, God, that they need to hear the word. And so God, I pray that they receive the word and they hear it now. And I pray for faith. It is a gift. I pray for faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That was a tough workout. That was brutal. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was worth it, though. But it honestly, was. It wasn't quite as much work as these last five weeks of work before the <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that was, yeah, that was a lot. The state kind of, I just, you know, we never really hear the perspective. We hear more so the perspective of those that are viewing the cross and or just on the outside. But to hear directly from Jesus on the cross and the words that he spoke, that's what's mm -hmm. deep. 
best people. <laughs> yeah, you're so right. Which video do you like the most from these past five weeks of Words from the Cross? You know, I have to say the one regarding salvation, salvation and grace. Yeah. Um, I was just now really getting into a season where I was understanding what it meant to live in grace. So that one hit home for me. Yeah, for sure, for sure. That's awesome. So that brings us to challenge number one. Sorry. Challenge number <laughs> one. Let us know what your favorite video from the Words from the Cross series was and why. And why. Comment below right now. Right now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> challenge number two. Two, challenge number two. We want you to invite a friend to the premiere. Come on now. Now listen. Come on now, listen all of the above. We cannot be inviting friends that are already Youth Hope participants. Grab somebody from the outside and bring them in. And what we need you to do is when they come to the premiere, have them shout you out. Let us know who invited them. And also make sure you let your small group leaders know that you're inviting someone too. There's a prize in store for you. Ooh. Invite a friend. <laughs> awesome, awesome. <laughs> we can't wait you and your friends. Woo. Have a good workout, girl. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>